Hi friends, welcome to my channel. My name is Juan, I'm a yarn addict, hence the name Juan the Yarn Addict, and I want to thank each and every one of you guys for stopping by to check out my video today. This is a yarn and crochet channel where we talk about all things yarn and all things crochet, so if that interests you, please sit back and watch this video because today, my friends, I offer you another session of Kicking It Up with Juan. So I've been on this journey where I've been caking up vintage yarns, and I have all of my trays here. I call them cake trays because we make cakes, I put them in trays, cake trays. And I got these trays from the Dollar Tree, otherwise known as the Dollar 25 tree. And so I paid a dollar 25 for each one of these trays. And so as we've been caking up the yarns, I've been placing them into these trays. So I kind of wanted to give you a bird's eye view of the cakes that we've caked up so far. So here are the first two trays. These are all vintage variegated yarns. Most of them are red heart. There are a few that are not red heart yarns, but um, yeah, so here are the first 12. Super, super nice, lots of blues. We have the one down here at the bottom that stands out. Very nice, love that. Okay, and let me get uncaught out of the ball winder. Whoops, okay. Let's take this cake tray and put it over here. Next, we have these seven. Very nice. This is Red Heart Kids, I believe. And the colorway is called Dream Girl. Very nice. That one stands out. I like this one, too. Very nice. All right. And then we have here six more brown shades very nice this reminds me of McCall but this is actually a discontinued red heart with love super nice I like this one too the muted colors very nice and then we have some more six more I think this is kaleidoscope here and I don't know the name of this one here, but I'm really liking it. Let me check. So just to keep the situation open for me to be able to put this back in here, I just put my finger in there. Let's see, what is the colorway of this? Candy. The colorway here is candy. Very nice. Let me put this back in here. Okay, and then last but not least, we have two cakes of Kaleidoscope. We have some Sayel yarn down here. Very nice. So we're up to six trays of caked up vintage variegated yarns. So I have been caking up solids. But uh, I'm not really featuring solids because if you've seen one white, you've seen them all. So these are all unique in the fact that they are discontinued. They're not being made anymore. And so I am taking all these up because I am working up a project behind the scenes where I'm using all of the colors in one particular project. So, yeah, there are... 72, let's see, six times six is 36. I have a total of 72 different uh, kinds of vintage variegated yarns. So we're about halfway through this whole caking process. So for today, I don't know if we're gonna get through all of this. As you saw in the thumbnail, I have quite a bit here to go through. I haven't decided which ones we're going to work on, but the orange is definitely catching my eye. It's a solid, but I mean, the squish factor is amazing. So I felt compelled to put it with my vintage variegated yarns because I just love the squish, my friends. It's so good, you know? Anyway, let me sit that over there. Let's look at the vintage variegated yarns here. So this here 
Bret Hart Knitting Worsted. It's three and a half ounces, four ply. The colorway is just called oranges. Super nice. I don't know if that dark color there is one of the oranges, but okay. If this is what they want to call it, by all means. I will tell you that this particular skein is squish, but you can tell it's one of the older kinds of vintage variegated yarns where it's not like today's yarn. So anyway, there's that one. That's a contender to go up first. And then we have two skeins of primary. Very nice. I really, really like this because it's subdued. All the colors are there, but they're subdued colors. Vintage vibes, 100%. So I'm going to sit those there. This is Kaleidoscope, I think. And I thought for a second that it could have been Mexicana yarn. Um, I'm not exactly sure. Let me see here. This is Kaleidoscope for sure. I still have the tag in here. I can't tell. Actually, no. This looks more vibrant than this. This might actually be Mexicana yarn. So let me put that over to the side. It's not to be included in our project. Okay. So we have those so far. And then we have here pink camo. Okay. And then here we have Nantuck Ombre, Columbia Minerva, 100% Orion Acrylic, three and a half ounces. You can tell they don't make this like this anymore. I mean, just the feeling of it. I remember the blankets that my grandmother used to make when, you know, I was a kid. They felt very different than they do now. It's giving me those vibes. So I don't know the name of this particular one, but that's what we have there. Browns and blues. Very nice. I'm assuming that is a red heart colorway. I'm not 100% sure, but this is a bonus by Mill End Yarn. The colorway is, we don't know the color. There is no name for this. So, 79 cents is what it cost. Okay. Next, we have a Lion Brand Sayel. The colorway here is called Springtime Ombre. And what are the specs on this? So, it's three ounces, 85.05 grams, 100% DuPont Orlin acrylic. Super nice, very powdery, pastel, vintage variegated yarns, very nice. Let's see, what is this one? This is called Poppin' Yarn, premier quality yarn. The colorway is called Honeydew. And it looks like that, you know, marled yarn where there's two colors. And just at first glance, I would imagine this greenish color here is the Honeydew. And then that other color looks like a light gray. Super nice. And last but not least, sugar and spice. Very nice. This is a red heart. And it's three ounces at 85 grams. It's a number four weight. I mean, I don't know if the CYC was even established back then. None of their information is anywhere on any of these skeins, but we can safely say and assume that all of these yarns are medium four weight yarns. So I think friends that for today, I'm gonna start with this one right here, the oranges, and then we're gonna jump over to primary. Okay, so let me move this out of the way 
I'm going to place this on a brief pause just so that any of the data that we have acquired so far does not get lost. Just give me one second. Okay, so we are back. Look at this. Very nice. So we have like yellows into like the oranges and then I don't know what this is because to me this looks like a burgundy color and then it goes back into the oranges and then back into the yellows and then for a smidge here there's white so I really like the way that's laid out because it's giving me like ombre vibes but not really if that makes any sense the transition is gradual until you get to this dark piece and then it's like, bam, there it is. Okay, so like always, what I do is I create a slip knot with my yarn before I start because it just makes it easier to find when you're caking up, well, any yarns actually, and it holds better here. So once you have your slip knot created, I just take this and I sit it on the slat there, just like that, and then I feed it through the eye so I just wrap it around and feed it through just like that. And then for the first few rounds, I go slow because what I want to do is have the yarn hold on to these pieces here, if you can see what I'm doing. So I'm just taking my fingers, making sure that this yarn is coming over and not under. Let's go nice and slow. Here we go. Nice and slow. Nice and slow. Now usually I hold on to this for tension. So I should do that. <laughs> I should do that. Because otherwise we're just creating a whole mess. Anyway, I really, really like this colorway. It pops, it stands out. It's, it's like a bunch of warm colors which is nice and it will offset a lot of the blues and the purples that I have in my vintage variegated yarn collection here. I have tons of like these mermaidy colors. So to have this would be just the balance that's needed. So that's fun. Now I can just go to town. Three ounces goes very quickly, friends. And I would imagine that this whole outer shell it might catch. It might not go as smooth as I'm hoping, but we shall see. I can tell you that so far everything is coming out as planned, which is nice. These vintage variegated yarns have an outside shell, so to speak, because once it sits for a long time, I don't, I don't want to say it mends together but it gets used to its neighbor the fellow strands that sits next to it so I like that for them <laughs> once I have everything caked up this project is gonna go so fast um, and whatever I have left over I'm putting into another project to ensure that all of it gets used so none of this work is going in vain Already it's starting. It's starting already, friends. <laughs> it's okay. I expected this. I'm anticipating a lot of knots coming out of here because it's part of this outer shell. And again, three ounces, I mean, it's not a lot of yarn. So we'll have quite a bit of the knotting. I just have to be sure to not pull so hard. And for those of you guys, who come across this when you're caking up your skeins and you have like knotty portions, whatever you do, don't pull on it. Just allow the knot to come out nice and easy. The easier you allow it to come out, the easier it is to pull apart. And it just makes it a lot easier to work with and be done. We're approaching this outer shell here. Nice and easy. See, I want to go very quickly. I want to go, mm, but I can't because we'll have a whole mess on our hands, friends. We don't want that. 
we want to get through the skeins because I have tons more that need to be caked up. One of these days, I'll be able to cake up these yarns and knock out like 10 cakes in an hour. Knots and all, just get it done. <laughs> just get it done, you know? I wonder if some of these colorways that you guys are looking at bring back memories. I know for me it would, like if I worked up a project with a specific colorway that I remember, I'd be like, hey, I used to work with that. I, I know exactly what that feels like. But I haven't had that opportunity. And I would imagine 20 years from now, the colors we're currently working with are going to be vintage variegated, vintage solids. And we're going to say, hey, I remember getting that at Joann's. It was on sale for $2.79 with 20% off. And look at it now. The yarn glows in the dark. It creates stitches by itself. You know, technology and all. <laughs> technology, we gotta love it, right? Who knows what they're gonna come out with for the future. This last section here. See, this is what I was talking about. You see how that sh there's a shell? It just, it gets used to sitting next to that particular strand of yarn for such a long time. So this is the part that gets all knotted up because it's stuck next to its neighbor. So very carefully with your hand and not your ball winder, just peel it apart to avoid any, any, any issues. Because I will tell you, multiple knots will form. I know this from experience. Okay, let me kick up what I have so far. Okay. If there's one pet peeve with kicking up vintage yarns, it's this. It's making sure that these final strands come apart and not knot up next to its neighbor. They're having separation anxiety. <laughs> okay, so look at this, friends. This is so good for us. We get through that cake in no time. Okay. This is good. Okay. So I'm going to backtrack this out a little bit, make this a nice long tail, and wrap this around the cake. Now, there's many ways people end their cakes. Me, I create a belt. I wrap around a few times, and then I take this last piece right here, and I tuck it inside the cake around that belt. And I go, I go around a few times. And then I pull nice and tight. There you go, just like that. And then I take this, and you see how this ball band is taller than the actual cake? So what I do is, I learned this from lots of practice. So I take an eyeball adjustment, pinch at the top here. So everything from here down is the size of the cake. And I take this and I fold it in. And then I fold like this. And then I sit this on top of the column here. But first I have to pull out my yarn here. So I just pull that out nice and gently, just like that. And then I sit this on top of the cylinder and I just pull the cake off. There we go. And I'll always know that this was oranges because I saved the label. And I think what I'm going to do is, once the yarn is all done being used, I'm going to take all of these ball bands and I'm going to make a collage. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. Because, I mean, it's been a long time since the labels look like that. And I think that would be a nice, nice, peature, nice feature, feature. <laughs> a nice feature on the wall somewhere. So, there we go. All right, next, we're going to work primary. Yes, we're going to work primary. So let's give you another close-up of primary. And as I mentioned, lots of muted colors there. Nothing too loud, but it's a very effective vintage variegated yarn. Okay, so we have the skein on the outside for the outside pool. 
and here is the inside pool, just like that. So as always, let's just create a slip knot like this, and let's put it on the ball, the ball winder. I was about to say ball band. All right, let me pause one more time just to make sure we have our data saved. One second. Okay, so far so good. We're going without a hitch. I love that for us. <laughs> okay, so this doesn't appear to have like a shell on the outside. So I would imagine this being a little smoother to complete. We may have a little bit of a hiccup like here. You see how it's like all, yeah. All right, let's get this started. So nice and slow for the first few rounds to just go over. As you see, I, I haven't set it up on the eye yet. I want to make sure that this is all covered. Nice and easy. Okay. And now we're going to set it up in the eye. There's tons of different ways to do this. However, it works for you is fine. There's no one concrete way to do this. For me, this is how I like to do it. So, all right. Nice and slow until we get situated here. Wow, look at these colors. I love this purple. It's nice and dark. You can barely see it. So good. Okay. We're off to the horse races, friends. Love this for us. So it appears... It appears to be just a sequence of like five colors. So purple, blue, green, red, and then light blue. Wait, maybe there's more. Okay, let's start again. So there's a lime, a tan, or a gold. So lime, tan, purple, brown, blue, green, a dark blue, and like a gray. Well, wait, there's a lot of colors. Who am I kidding? <laughs> I'm trying to figure this out. That's not going to work. It's just colors. It is a plethora of colors. It's all the things. I really wish they had these kinds of colors now. But that's okay. There's another um, co vintage colorway from Red Heart, it's called Earthy. Excuse me, it's called Earthy. I think it happens to be one of my favorites. It's got browns and maroons, dark blues. Do I have any nearby? No, as it would have it, I don't have any Earthy in this room. Or do I? No, I don't. It's in the other room. Can you believe it, I have more cake trays in the other room? I just remembered. Wow. Anyway, this here is 223 meters, 244 yards. This is five ounces. Now, because of the fact that they have the yardage on the skein, I would imagine that this is not very old. It's vintage, but not as old as some of the other ones that we've worked up so far on our journey. So, at least we have yardage. Maybe they'll bring it back. It's so good. Look at that. Love that colorway. So I just have to be careful not to pull too fast because as I said, if we wind too fast, when it goes through our fingers, it, it's going to knot up very bad. There we go. And if we go nice and slow, if it thinks about knotting up, we're going to catch it. And that actually helps us get through our skeins a little faster, which is nice for us. So. I would imagine that you're either watching me cake up these yarns or you're crocheting, working on a whip, just listening to me babble about the yarn, which is great for us. If this is your thing, friends, hit the like button. Consider subscribing to my channel if you're not already subscribed. I'd love to have you. We're doing all the things, friends. Caking up the yarns, we're crocheting up the yarns, dabbling in Tunisian, playing around with the knitting needles. We're going to be doing some art projects involving yarn, like mandalas and things. It's so good. We just, there isn't anything we're not going to do. If it's yarn related, we're going to play with it. You know, want to know why? Because I'm a yarn addict.
Yarn addicts love everything and anything that has to do with yarn. And that's me, friends. I just love yarn. I love the colors, some more than others. <laughs> but I do like all the colors. That wasn't the case, I'll tell you. Last year, I had such a thing for pink in, an, in a not-so-good way. And I don't know why. I had such a hang-up for no reason. So coming into the new year, I made a resolution to work with it and to embrace it, and I have in many ways. And so as a result, I have a favorite colorway of pink. The next time that I save our data, I'm going to go get that colorway and show you. Hopefully with the lights and everything, you can see the full effect of that situation. So we'll see. Hold on. There we go. We're almost done. We just have this little bit left. And I have one more skein of this particular colorway. And just so it doesn't get lost in translation, I want to kick up the second skein of primary right after this one. I want to keep them together. Because the other skein, as you may or may not have saw, it doesn't have a ball band. And I don't want to tack it onto this one because... It may not fit. So, we're getting there, friends. Come on. <laughs> it's always a thing, right? Just when you're close to the end, it's, it's always a thing. Okay. We're getting somewhere, friends. We're getting there. I know people who can sit here and spend hours working through knots and they love it. Me? No, I don't have that kind of patience. If I don't get it out right away, I'll cut it, I'll put it in a pile, maybe even put it in like a pickle jar, and then when I need it for like stuffing or something, or if someone else needs it for stuffing, I'm like, here you go, just cut this up and stuff it. <laughs> there it is, instant stuffing. Okay. So let me backtrack a little bit and create a belt. Here we go. Let's wrap this around just like that. And then we're going to tuck it under and around a few times and then tug it just like that. Perfect. And now we're going to take this top piece off right here. Just like that. Perfect. Fold and fold sit it on the top of our cylinder here and just pop that off. There we go. Super nice. Isn't that nice? Okay. All right. So I'm going to put us on a brief pause. I want to show you guys the pink that I actually like. One second. Okay, friends. So here's the pink. This is the pink that I like. Now, in 2023, I didn't like any pink. Every shade was just off limits. I didn't have it in my house. I didn't care for it. And so coming into the new year, I'm like, let me just embrace it. Let me just get all the pinks and see what I think about them. And yeah, this one grew on me. What is the color name? Neon pink. So, yep. This is the one that I like. And I have several skeins of this that I will not part with. Now, I did an amigurumi recently in April that had this colorway in it, and it made me love this color even more. So, super nice. I love that for me. And another thing I like is the contrast. You can put this up to any color, and it just, well, maybe not any color, but like that. You don't want to do that. <laughs> but you can do this. Super nice. What else can we do this with? Mm. Now you see there's some pinks in there that I don't care for. Mm. The, what's the coloring name here? I think this is country, country rose pink. I don't know. Anyway. I like this for us. It's so good. Yep, let me slip that over here. So I can look at it while I cake up the things. All right, so 
I made mention that we needed to work on this one because the other one had the ball band in it. And I don't want to fuss with yarn barf, so I, if I can't get it, I'm going to skip this one. Yes, I'm, I'm not going to risk it. So I'm going to sit that one right there. Let's work on another one. So let's do this bonus buy, mill end yarn. Um, this is the one that doesn't have a colorway name, but look at those colors. It's so nice. It's got that mauve and like aqua. So nice. Love that for us. Let's see if I have a center pool situation. It looks like I do. Yeah. Okay, we do. Winner, winner, chicken dinner, as they say. Okay, per usual, let's create that slip knot. Another reason why I do this is not just for this. When I go to pull a cake out of my cake tray, I don't have to worry about fussing with the yarn. All I have to do is look for my slip knot, insert my hook, and begin. Because when you're crocheting, that's the first thing that you do. You create a slip knot on your hook. There it is. And if by some chance you don't need that slip knot, all you need to do is just pull it out like that. So it's just a time saver and it helps the situation with the ball band um, and the ball winder. Not the ball band. You know what I mean. All right, so let's go here. Oh, wait. Let's go around a few times to just make sure that that gets covered like that. And you don't have to do that. That's just something I do. Okay. Now let's do the things. Okay. Now this, the sticker's covering it. I think this is just three ounces. So this should go without a hitch. It's not a lot of yarn. It's not a lot of color either. Everything is very subdued in this situation here. Upon further inspection here, I'm looking at mauve, aqua. I'm actually seeing like a blue-gray color, which is super nice. And then the, this brown here reminds me of like cinnamon or like a burnt orange. Very interesting color choices. Maybe it was just the in colors of the time, maybe. I'm not exactly sure, but very interesting, very peculiar. I wonder how this is going to work up next to the rest of them. That's something that I think about, too, all the time, friends. Like, is it going to be so far off one colorway work up next to another colorway that it just doesn't make sense? But I guess that's just the fun of it, you know? If everything is vintage variegated and it's a project trying to include every single one, well, you're bound to have some neighbors that don't get along with each other. So that's fine. Now, I believe there might be a shell on this. We're going to see in just a minute because we're nearing the end. Okay. We have a little bit of a shell. Not too bad. Nothing sticking too much. Nice and slow. Don't go too hard. Okay. We almost made it to the end. There's a little bit of a shell situation happening here, but that's to be expected. It's par for the course, you know? So that's fine. You know, see, I thought at one time, you know, hey, Juan, don't cake up your yarns until you're ready to use them. But when you're working with things like this, where you need to pull and put back and pull and put back, it's kind of easier to just have everything ready, you know. So, and besides, as I mentioned in the beginning, whatever doesn't get used is going right into a second project. So... All of this will be used. And 
So we're going to pull this out, create a belt, just like this. Pull it nice and tight and go around the belt. Now see, I know people who use like barrettes and safety pins and all sorts of things to hold their cakes in place. Use whatever you want, you want to use. This is your cake, help yourself. So now we're gonna pull this out, just like that. Fold this up and then put this on the cylinder and slide it through, just like that. Okay, so there we have it. Okay, so it looks like we have time for one more. So, which will it be? Will it be the Nantuck Ombre? Which I'm curious about because is it really Ombre? Um, are we going to do Sugar and Spice? Or are we going to do Pink Camo? I don't want to do this one. Um, line Brand Sale. Hmm. Let's do, let's do this one. Okay. We have, do we have an inside pool? Uh, no. Yarn barf right away. Cheese and crackers. Yarn barf. Lucky pick of the draw, right friends? Love this for us. Okay. Yeah, this is some old yarn, friends. The halo is getting knotted with other halos. Okay. This doesn't look like ombre to me, right? Maybe that's just how they were able to make it back in the day. Now we have gradient cakes and things, which is great for us. And this is a light four weight yarn. It doesn't say double knit. The colorway is called brownberry. So that's interesting. Brownberry. Okay, anyway, here's my slip knot. We're going to put it on the cylinder, just like that. Let's wind this around. There we go. We're going to thread it through and just do all the things. Let's do it. Hopefully not get knotted up here. I just pulled all that apart. Oh yeah. This has been around a while. It's going to be problematic to say the least. But you know what? That's fine. This is why we're caking it up, friends. Because I don't want to sit there while I'm working on a project and fuss with knots. Let's just get it all done right now, you know? So this is three and a half ounces. It's 100% Orlan acrylic, brownberry, Columbia Minerva. I'm gonna have to look that up. Nantuck Ombre. I would imagine they had several options back then, this not being the only one. So that's interesting. I have quite a bit of uh, variation here with the colors that have been caked up so far. I'm very excited to see how I can play with all of the colors and lay everything out. Now originally I was going to do another project where I did solid granny squares. So the banner across my channel, I made that blanket solid granny squares using leftover yarns. I've uh, acquired over the years. I'm, like Originally I thought about, okay, well, why don't I do an entire project like that? Solid granny squares, all vintage variegated yarns. It's going to be all the things, right? So then I said to myself, why don't I challenge myself? Why not do hexagons, but then not just plain hexagons? Why don't I do like a stitch sampler hexagon motif situation with all of this. But then I thought, okay, well, I'm using variegated yarns. I have to keep the stitches simple because 
the details are going to get lost in the colors. So that's kind of where I'm sitting at right now. Like, do I do plain hexagons? Do I try doing things like puff stitches? And will it really get lost? I think it will. I mean, this is a lot to look at, especially especially if you take all of these cakes and put them together side by side. I mean, you'll be there for a good five minutes looking at all the different colors. You know, it's going to be a for sure conversation piece. For sure. I'm probably 99% positive that's going to be one of the things that gets talked about in my house. They'll stand there and they'll go like this. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> Which I like that for us. Okay, so this one has a shell. This for sure has a shell. I have to watch. So like I mentioned before, when you have a shell, you have to go slow. Because any sudden flicks of the ball winder, it will cause a knot. You have to go nice and slow and let it peel back. Just like this. And if it does get knotted up, because you went slow, it's easy to just peel apart. Hopefully, everything goes without a hitch. Now, there, you, this is actually like, wow, you have to peel this apart. It's that stuck together. So, when it's this bad, I'm going to have to just do one of these numbers. It's almost like they sprayed, like, adhesive. <laughs> That's what it feels like. There's, like, adhesive on this. Wow, and just that fast. I try to keep it simple, friends, you know? There we go. Oof. Yeah, this is getting ugly. Nice and easy. I'm curious, guys. What are you guys working on? Are you guys working on a project? Are you just sitting here watching me peel all of this back? I mean, when I see other channels doing projects and things, I, I work on a whip and I only look up when they say, hey, look. <laughs> so... Here is the tail. There we go. So I'm just going to very carefully pull this apart because it's all stuck together. Okay. We're almost at the end, friends. We're almost at the end. This is so good for us. I love this. Now, once my cakes are done, then I'm going to transition all of this into whipping it with wand sessions see it's going to come full circle and then when the whip is done then it's going to go on a podcast episode and then we'll talk about all the things see you're going to know every part of the process it's going to be like yes one i remember you did it that week and you did it with that yarn yes anyway let me go ahead and belt this up and while i belt this up friends as I mentioned before, if you enjoy this, if you like watching me cake up yarns and things, hit the like button, leave a comment, help me with the algorithm and things. Consider subscribing to my channel if you haven't already. I'd love to have you. I say that a lot too because I feel like the more the merrier. You know, we're one big happy family here. And um, also too, don't forget to hit that notification bell to stay updated with everything regarding me and my channel. I go live every Sunday at 6 p.m. Eastern with my mother. Feel free to stop by and say hi and hang out with us. Let me go ahead and put this in here like this. There we go. So we're going to set that in there like this. Slide this out. Do one of those and like this and like this. Okay. So for today, 
we caked up four cakes. There you go. All right, friends. So that is it for this session. If you enjoyed this, you heard me say all the things twice already. I'm not going to bore you to details, bore you with the details. Um, so that is all for this session. And until the next one, guys, take care. Bye.